I've been looking through some candidates to come to church. What? This lady plays the oboe. I notice we don't have very many oboes in the worship team. Play D1 softball at Vanderbilt? You know, our church team could use some bass hits. I'm just being honest. You're gonna think I'm making this one up. He's a contractor, and his last name is literally Drywall. Licensed canoe operator? I, are you supposed to get a license? I don't know. Either way, church camp. Got a big speaker in my car if we need it. I don't know when we would. Mark him a maybe. Skills can make pancakes in my sleep. Weaknesses, I can make pancakes in my sleep. That's a maybe. Oh, another oboe, I'm gonna have to pick. Well, there can only be one. Never been to church. Could be tricky. No, they're welcome. Everyone is welcome. But she won't know the tunes. <laughs> it's okay. We don't want resumes. It doesn't matter where you've been or where you're going. We want everyone to come to church with us. Even the guy who tears the hot chocolate packet weird and gets dust everywhere? <laughs> yes. Good.
waters of change wash over my head. I do this because I know who I am. I do this because I'm forgiven. I do this because he rose. I know no water can change me. But this water is a sign that change has occurred in my heart. My life will never be the same. So now I'm proclaiming it to the world. And just as Jesus was buried, I will be buried. Just as Jesus rose, I will rise. Faith, hope, love, none are greater than these. I have faith that Jesus is who he says he is. I have hope in his resurrection and his everlasting power. His endless love has forever changed my life. someone decides to follow Christ, their life is changed forever. Death turns to life. Despair changes to hope. Dark becomes light. It's a deep, quiet moment that could easily be kept hidden. But a change this profound can't stay a secret for long. It's time for the world to see what God has done. For we were once in darkness, but now we are light in the Lord. Baptism is an act of faith. It's a celebration, a beacon cutting through the fog, a message to the world that a lost cause has been redeemed, that God is here, and he is transforming lives. So embrace this moment. Declare his glory. And let your light shine.
Well, good morning and welcome to FCF. We are so glad that you guys have chosen to spend your Sunday morning with us. Come on, church. Welcome to Baptism Sunday. Put your hands together and sing this one
thankful for your presence, for your faithfulness, Jesus. God, you're the name above all names. We lift you up in this place this morning. You're faithful, God. You are worthy. Sing this with us, church. You were the word the beginning. One way. You're hidden glory in creation. Now we yield in you our cross. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. And nothing comes. 
today the secret working of your spirit deep inside human hearts we thank you for the way you get inside our hearts you get inside our minds you show us the truth about yourself the truth about life and we become new people thank you for all those that are going to take a stand today that they are forevermore your followers Lord Jesus in a world where everybody's following somebody they have decided to put their trust in you and become your followers father my heart's desire and prayer is that this glorious truth of baptism will be made clear to us afresh that it'll be meaningful and powerful and I pray that you will do surprising things in the hearts of all of us here today we ask it all in Christ's name amen amen church amen are you excited about today it's gonna be a great Sunday why don't you uh, introduce yourself to somebody as you sit down say hey my name is this what's your name Welcome to FCF Church. I met some uh, guests out in the lobby before service, and I said, you picked a good Sunday to come for the first time. Am I right, FCF? Am I right? I am super excited about today. So welcome to everyone, but all of our first-time guests this morning, a special warm welcome to you, whether you're here in person for this service or you're watching online and it's your first time. We are just honored that you've chosen to spend this particular Sunday with us. So can we let our guests know how much we just appreciate them and are excited for them to be here today. So we would love to know you're with us and the way to let us know is to fill out our Connect card uh, that's in the inside the program here if you're in the auditorium or online. Just go to fcfchurch.com, tap the Connect button, fill out a little bit of information, lets us know a little bit about you and we'd really appreciate that. So we've had all kinds of exciting things happening here at FCF Church. Last evening was our Spanish community potluck and it was awesome and uh, so we've got more things coming up and one of those things is next Saturday we have the costume and candy Palooza. Let me tell you, folks, this is a fun event. It's at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and we've got games for the kids. We've got uh, a petting zoo. We've got a hayride. We've got trunk or tree happening afterwards. So this is our version of Halloween, So, but it's a Palooza. So, so don't come with scary costumes. Come in fun costumes, okay? And, uh, but we would love to have you come bring your family, your friends, neighbors, uh, next Saturday at 4 o'clock. And we're also looking for some more volunteers. So if you're like me and you don't have kids but you just love to dress up, 
while she volunteer, you can just run a simple little game for us, help us out in a number of ways, maybe make some cotton candy. So you can register to help us with the event at fcfchurch.com slash events. As I said, there's just so many exciting things happening here at FCF Church. And if you are excited about the great things that our God is doing here in and through this church, we invite you to give, uh, to give to his great things. Uh, you can give on the website, in the app, or utilizing the offering boxes as you leave today. So exciting Sunday. We're going to baptize some, a bunch of people in just a little bit. But before that, Pastor Pete is going to remind us what baptism is all about. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to FCF Church. Are you happy to be here this morning? Isn't it great to be in God's house? Uh, our facilities director added, I think, 70 chairs. And it looks like we needed all 70 chairs. That's a great problem to have, isn't it, church? <laughs> it, this is your first time with us. We're so glad that you're here. My name is Pete. I have the incredible privilege of serving here as the associate pastor, serving alongside Pastor Randy. And if this is your first time, following service this morning, Guest Central will be, will be open. Pastor Randy, myself, some of our team will be there. We would love to meet you, shake your hand, answer any questions that you have about the church. Can we let our first time guests know how much we love and appreciate them being here? Some of you know this, but some of you may not know that October is actually Pastor Appreciation Month, and we have an incredible pastoral team, Pastor Chris, Pastor Adam, Pastor Ruben, Pastor Kim, and of course, our founding and lead pastor, Pastor Randy, who answered the call of God 32 years ago and planted this church. Can you let them know how much you love them? Great churches are the result of great leaders, and we have a fantastic leader in Pastor Randy. Uh, we love Baptism Sunday here at FCF. It's one of our favorite services, and we've had some incredible services this year for baptism. Uh, in February, we had a service. We were baptizing a lot of people, and something happened in that service that I've never seen in all my time in ministry. And we're trying to get people in and out of the tank very, very quickly. And Pastor Randy was baptizing a young lady. She was incredibly, incredibly excited. And there's a bar here, baptizees. You want to clip your feet under that bar. And she didn't. And um, when Pastor Randy went to baptize her, her head went down and her feet came up. And she Jackie Chan kicked Pastor Randy <laughs> in the back of the head. I've never seen that ever happen. She jumped out of the water, very excited. Pastor Randy turned around to see who had hit him. He was very, very confused. But that service was incredible. We baptized so many people that we ran out of shirts and towels. We were pulling random shirts out of the church bookstore, putting them on people to baptize them, to make a public profession of their faith. Isn't that awesome, church? It was great. I... I walked down the stairs of the baptismal tank and they handed me a soaking wet towel with brown stains on it. And all that went through my mind is, I really hope that's foundation. <laughs> about, two, about two months ago, we had another incredible baptismal service. We baptized 72 in February, 78 a few months ago. And if I'm honest, I just feel like rubbing the devil's face in it one more time. We have 80 people signed up to get baptized this morning. At two services. I want to start. I want to start. Actually, we, can you let Pastor Randy know how much you love him, how awesome he is? He, 
He's an introvert and he loves when everybody stares at him. It makes him uncomfortable like my wife. So we're going to start in Matthew 28, 19. It's right before Christ's ascension back into heaven. It says this, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations. What's the word? Them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to, what's the word? Pray. Everything I have commanded you. This is a command directly from the mouth of Jesus. But what is baptism? We have so many new families to FCF Church. They come from all different faith affiliations. And it's important for you to know what we believe in reference to baptism. So we're going to look at this from two very distinct perspectives. The first perspective is what does baptism mean? symbolize. We teach that baptism is an outward expression of an inward decision. It's an outward sign of an inward work. While it's symbolic in nature, there's more than just symbolism here. Baptism expresses publicly your trust in Christ. Baptism expresses publicly your trust in Christ. For a first century Christian, the public profession of your faith was not made by reciting a prayer. It, it was not made by uh, coming to church or coming to an altar. The public profession of your faith was made through public baptism. We see this all through the book of Acts. It says that someone believed and was baptized. It was universally practiced among first century Christians. It's the first step of obedience among first century Christians. And there's no such thing as an unbaptized first century Christian. There's only one we know of in all of Scripture, and there was a good reason why. If you know what it is, post it on social media and tag me, and I'll tell you if you're right. I wear a wedding ring. This is the, the clearest illustration we use for this. I wear a wedding ring. How many in the room are married? Good. It's not a good time to be shy, guys. Come on, throw your hands up. It's all right. Don't be... <laughs> You'll get yourself in trouble. I don't, I'm looking out for you. This ring does not make me married, nor does getting in this tank make you a Christian. This lets other people know that I'm married. Now, imagine if I go to Jessica, and I'm like, you know, baby, I've been looking at you for a long, long time. And I've been really trying to hold back these feelings for so long. <laughs> I want to spend the rest of my life with you, but I don't want to tell anybody. What do you think she'd say? She'd say, if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. That's what she's going to say. <laughs> no, this is a public profession of our faith. Baptism expresses publicly a transformation that's taken place spiritually. It's a physical picture of a spiritual reality. It's public to all, but it's personal to you. You've changed the way you think. You've changed the way you act. You no longer are driven by yourself. Pastor Randy said it a few seconds ago. Everybody's following somebody. Most people are following themselves. This is publicly saying, I no longer look to myself or anyone else. I look to Christ. I look to God. Romans 6, 1 says it this way. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were, what's the word? Into Christ Jesus were into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we should walk in the newness of life. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that anyone who is in Christ, in covenant with Christ, is a new creation. All is passed away. The old is passed away, and all is new. There's nothing supernatural that's going to take place in this tank. If you're not all in for Jesus, don't bother being baptized. There's, there's nothing, we don't sprinkle like Pastor Randy's protein powder in here that makes you a stronger Christian. <laughs> Build your biblical biceps in three weeks or less. <laughs> no. It is available in the bookstore for 19, no, I'm kidding. That's not true. 
Baptism is publicly saying, God, I'm following you. Something is shifted inside of me. It expresses publicly a transformation that's taken place spiritually, demonstrated by obedience personally. This right here is where I think a lot of people get lost. So much confusion around this. Colossians 2.12 says it this way. For you were, again, buried with Christ. We have this picture of death and resurrection. When you were baptized and with him you were raised to new life. Newness of life was Romans 6. New life here. Because you, here it is. What's the word? Because you trusted the mighty power of God. I don't look to myself. I'm looking to him. It's, It's not having information about something. It's not an ethereal concept. It's not information about something. It's putting your trust in someone and becoming their follower. And listen, the acid test of spiritual transformation is personal obedience. If you want to see if you're a Christ follower, this is where you look. You follow because you trust. Obedience is the mark of a Christ follower. Hebrews 5.9 says that he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Obedience is the mark of a Christ follower. Obedience is the true mark of a Christian. And saving faith will always lead to obedience. It will always lead us to obedience. You can say that you trust Christ, but obedience is the acid test. You can say you're his follower, but obedience demonstrates it. One of my friends was telling me a story about a young man that came to his church and came to Christ, became his follower, comes to his pastor. He's reading his Bible. It's a Bible-believing church. He says, he says Pastor, I was reading, and, and everywhere I see someone comes to Christ, they get baptized. So I want to be baptized right now after service. Take me to the lake. Dunk me, baby. Let's do this. God was so excited. And his pastor, he says, says, we can can do that, but what if we have you come come to church and we'll do it in church and we'll celebrate. You can even invite a bunch of your friends. He's like, okay, that's that's a good idea. The pastor says, if you you don't do this, how how are your friends going to know you're a Christian? He says, okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll come. I'll come to church and we can do it at church. It's a great idea. I'll invite all my friends and we'll have a big party. He said, but pastor, shouldn't they be able to tell I'm a Christian based on the way that I'm living? This this new believer in this short period of time had transitioned from believing in something to putting his trust in someone and becoming a follower. Obedience was the mark. So I'm not somehow suggesting that baptism is a condition of salvation. We teach at FCF that it's trust in Christ alone that carries saving power. We get that from, from Acts 16, the Philippian jailer. Asks Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? Paul says, believe, pistis, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. An interesting part of that story that I didn't plan to share, but I feel like I want to right now, is that story takes place His family comes to Christ, and immediately, it's sometime around one in the morning, they go down and they get baptized in the middle of the night. There's no food. There's no, let's sit down and talk about this. I'm professing my faith in Christ, and the first step of obedience to Christ is what? What is it? Baptism. Baptism isn't an issue of salvation. Baptism is an issue of obedience, but obedience is an issue of salvation. Baptism isn't a condition of salvation, but it will show us the condition of our hearts. Baptism expresses publicly a transformation that's taken place spiritually, demonstrated by obedience personally. This is what baptism represents. But what should be the result of baptism? I'll ask the question another way. What should baptism create? Hold that thought. I'm going to come back to it in a second. 
After our last baptismal service, I was down, down front here with uh, Neil Hagelin, who is one of our team members, is our facilities director, and we have 138 acres. We have seven buildings, the steadfast house out front, and you've even probably noticed a lot of the changes going around either for growth purposes or just making God's house look good. And Neil is an incredible man of God that does an awesome job, and we love you, Neil Hagelin. Can you let Neil know how much you love him? Neil, Neil is an extra mile person. He goes, the, he goes all in for Christ and, and for you. And he has an awesome team. Uh, Scott Eisenogle, Dwayne Broadhurst, Randy Huff, Jim Patrick, Jim Milstead, uh, Rob Dove, Mark Stoniker, Paul, Nick, Elon, Miss April. There's a whole group. Can you let those individuals on in our facility team know how much you love and appreciate? So I'm standing here next to Neil, and we're talking about just incredible services, Pastor Randy getting kicked in the head and stuff, <laughs> and we're looking at the tank, and we realize that there's between four and five inches less water in the tank than when we started. Like that much water had come out of the tank. It's probably between 30 and 40 gallons of water had come out as a result of the baptism. And Neil and I are talking, and I'm thinking about this. And even in that moment, I didn't realize it until I started preparing for this message. But I was thinking about all of the people making a profession of their faith and then being baptized and the impact of them hitting the water and coming back out and the ripples coming out and hitting the sides of the tank. We see the picture in Romans 6 of death and resurrection. And this beautiful imagery that's there. But I think there's another physical illustration that I had never thought about before. What, what if there's more? If you think about every time somebody goes into this tank and goes under the water, the ripples move throughout the sides of the tank. The impact of the baptism sends ripples over the side of the tank. Every, that was weird. Did you guys hear that? Or just my watch just talking to me? I'm going to go ahead and take that off. You want to have that? Here you go. You can keep it. Thank you. <laughs> they get baptized. The impact of the water sends ripples throughout the tank. I believe that every time someone is fully committed to Christ, sold out, it should send ripples through their life. It should send ripples through their social circles, through their family, through their occupational influences. The transformation in you will impact others. We started with Matthew 28, 19, where he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them. Another passage that comes from directly before the ascension is in Acts 1, 8. It says this, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Geographically, we, we can see this. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. We could also look at this passage relationally. Your family, Jerusalem. Your people, your circle, Judea, your neighbors and acquaintances, Samaria. You probably say, well, that's got to be people I don't know. No. If you know cultural history, you'll know that the Jewish people and the Samaritan people didn't get along. So it wasn't, maybe it's not a reference to, to people you don't know. Maybe it's a reference to people you don't like. Well, are you you saying I gotta I gotta share my faith with people I don't even like? Yes. You saying I, I have to reach out and have an impact on people that are my enemies? Absolutely. Well, what's next? Give them the one empty seat that's next to me in church. <laughs> I came early for that seat. I need a buffer. <laughs> yes. Yes. Let's. Make 
ripples, FCF Church. God wants to drop you in your social circle and watch the ripples flow. I had two or three illustrations with people that were in my life that I saw come to Christ and make ripples, but we got to baptize 80 people today, so it happened, okay? Just stay with me. Maybe I'll share another time. Let's make some ripples. God wants to see you have an impact on those around you. And when you're sold out to Christ, it changes everything. There's a spiritual transformation that takes place. Say it this way. A stone dropped in water creates ripples. You can't prevent it. It's a physical certainty. It's in your notes. A life fully surrendered to Christ creates ripples. You can't prevent it. It's a spiritual certainty. One of the purposes of public baptism is evangelism. And evangelism has this odd connotation. You picture somebody with a bullhorn screaming at people, turn or burn, sinners! That's that's not what it is. Getting baptized is one of the very first steps in sharing your faith. Getting baptized without planning to share your faith is the equivalent of buying a fire suit and a fire truck with no intention of fighting fires. It may look cool. You can show all your friends, but you've missed the entire purpose for which it was created. Baptism is a public profession. Baptism is a public demonstration of your faith, which will, in turn, provide the opportunity to share your faith. Make ripples. Be a witness. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.2 says, The things you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable men who will be able to teach others also. Did you miss it? The things you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable men who will be able to teach others also. Last week, We celebrated baby dedication, and I think we said there were 49 uh, kids that were dedicated, but actually one family snuck in. So it was actually even 50 families dedicated their children to Christ. 50 families. Do you realize the ripple effect of these families? I've heard people say, you know, it's just so sad. I see parents bringing kids into this horrible world and how terrible it's going to be. I just couldn't disagree more. I'm not sure what you saw when you looked at this stage, but I saw an army of young men and women that God is raising up that will not compromise, will accomplish his purpose on this earth and will usher in his return. Every child that was on this stage, every baby that's in the nursery, every teenager in the youth ministry, and every young adult, they have come into this world for such a time as this. And hell better look out, because they're coming. They're coming. Stop praying for our kids to be safe and start praying they'll be dangerous for the gates of hell. My son's getting baptized. I'm sorry. Here's the challenge. Is there some people that want to play church, they want to play Christian, but they have no intention of being a Christ follower. Uh, my wife, Jess, and I, we have, we have three kids. My oldest is Ethan. He's 10. Then I have Daniel and Zoe, eight and six. And uh, we live in Braddock Heights. And how many of you have, have taken a shower? You turn, you turn the water on in the shower, and man, about 30 seconds in, it goes from hot to warm. How, this has happened to you. Be honest. It's just, I mean, you're like, oh, man. And then you go into, like, speed shower mode. You're like, what do I need to wash? You're like, oh, i got to get out of here. <laughs> For the last several weeks, this has happened to me, I'm going to say three times. And finally, on Wednesday of this week, I come downstairs, and I'm like, 
guys, why is there no hot water? Like, what's going on? And Ethan's sitting at the table doing his homework, and he's like, it's not my fault. I'm like, whose fault is it? I could tell he knew something. He's like, Daniel, all the way. I'm like, what? Well, well, why do you, how do you know it's Daniel? He said, well, Daniel keeps filling the bathtub all the way up to the top so he can practice baptizing himself. <laughs> I said, he's not even getting baptized this week. He said, I know, Dad. I know. And went back to his homework. I don't say this to be mean, I don't say it to be harsh or insulting, but in full sincerity, one of the things that I've noticed in pastoral ministry, and it breaks my heart, is there are a lot of people that want to play Christian, but they have no intention of being a Christ follower. God help us. That's not what he's calling us to. And this tank is a public profession that you will be obedient. You will trust you will follow. Don't just be a cultural Christian. But be sold out all the way. I mean, it, it's, the, it's the equivalent of somebody, you know, they're like, you're like, how can I, how can I get in this tank and just, I don't want to, I, I don't, shh, quiet down. I don't want to make any, I don't want to, if I go like this, I won't make any ripples. If I'm real. How, how can I do this and just be as, shh, 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 no, I'm, I'm a Christian. Don't tell anybody. Shh. Just. Or it's just this, we're going to be this little. Shh, don't tell anybody. I'm, I'm a Christian, but I want to keep it on the down low, on the DL. I think I think he's calling us to have an impact. I think he's calling us to make to make some ripples, church. Should I do it? Yeah. <laughs> here, here, here's the deal. I want you to remember, if I do this, which I'm not sure, I'm probably 50-50 right now. <laughs> the purpose of this is not a joke. It's not a gag. It's, it's not just to create levity in you. I want you to remember for the rest of your life that that goofball Italian with the slick back hair said that I'm supposed to make ripples in my life. I'm not supposed to go through life as an undercover Christian. There is no such thing. We are supposed to <laughs> make some ripples. Would you stand to your feet? Heavenly Father, we know that you want to drop us in Frederick County in Gaithersburg, in Rockville, in Pennsylvania, in Virginia, in all the areas that you have called us to. And you want to see us make ripples. God, and as people make a public profession of their faith this morning in this tank, God, they're sold out for you. They're going to not just make ripples in this tank, but they're going to make ripples in their social circles in their occupational influences, in their families. Lives would be changed and hope would be found. And even those who may feel like they're insignificant, that they can't make a difference, that they're nobody, that everybody can make ripples. Everybody can have an impact. God, that's our heart. That's our desire. That's what we want to represent this morning in FCF Church. A church that's making ripples in Jerusalem. Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Use us, Father, in Jesus' name. Come on, in one loud FCF voice we said. Let's sing this together. Come on. I have decided to follow Come on, sing that with us. No turning back. 
baptize these we're out of space need you to keep coming this direction <laughs> keep coming down keep coming down we're gonna fill this stage this morning church amen come on okay miss 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 barbara what's your name okay okay and, and who's the gentleman next to you this is my husband mark Hubbard. okay can you guys hear me okay 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 uh mark uh, how long have you guys been following christ Six years. It's awesome. Where do you live? I live in Curie Beach, North Carolina. North Carolina. Came up for baptism service. What's your name? Ethan. Um, how long have you become an FCF church? Three years and I want to get baptized so I can follow Jesus and I want the whole world to know it. What's your name, brother? Javon. J Javon. How long have you been at SCF Church? About three months. About three months. What's your name, dear? Lauren. Miss Lauren. How long have you come to FCF? Since I was a baby. Since you were a baby. Today's the day, amen? How long have you been coming to FCF? Ten months. What's your name? Luke. Luke. What's your name, brother? Markel. Markel, how long have you come to FCF? For about like three weeks. About like three weeks. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. What's your name, Donald? Donald. Okay. Oh, that's <laughs> Keep messing that up. Sorry. And, and how long have you come to FCF? 13 years. 13 years. Today's the day. What's your name, dear? Julia. Miss Julia, how long have you been coming to FCF? Eight years. Eight years. Today's the day. <laughs> what's up, Travis? How long have you been coming to FCF? About two years. And what's your, what's your name? Travis Beard. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> Miss Mary Beth, what's your name? Mary And how long have you been coming to FCF? Two years. You, you connected to this guy? You love him? He's a good egg, a little cracked. What's your name? Lucas. Lucas, how long have you been coming to FCF? Um, about two years. About two years. What's your name, babe? Thomas, how long have you been baptized? Since I was a baby. Since you were a baby. Today's the day. Are you getting baptized or baptizing? You're getting baptized. We're, come on, come on, turn forward here so they can see you. There you go. What's your name, dear? Lisa. Lisa, how long have you been coming to FCF? Two weeks. Two weeks. Today's the day. John. What's your name? John. John, how long have you been coming to FCF? About six months. Do they have do we have a, a, a decent young adults ministry or the best young adults ministry in Frederick County? Definitely the best. <laughs> What's your name? Carly Lee. How, how long come to FCF? Uh, two and a half years. And who's the guy behind you that's going to baptize you, the strapping young man? My sweet husband. He's a good egg. All right, here we go. What's your name, dear? My name is Natalie. Natalie. And how long come to FCF? About 18 years. 18 years. Today's the day, amen? What's going on? Tyler. Tyler. How long come to FCF? Two years. Two years. Today's the day. <laughs> Did you guys plan that? No, we did. Tyler, also, how long have you been coming to FCF? Seven months. It's awesome. It's awesome. What's your name, dear? Um, Chloe, how long have you been to FCF? Two years. Two years. What's your name? Jackson. Jackson, how long have you been coming to FCF? A little over a year. A little over a year. Today's the day. Hi, how are you? <laughs> uh, how long have you been coming to FCF? A year and a half. And what's your name? Kim. Miss Kim. Joey, what's up? Joey, Joey, what's your name? Joey. Joey, how long have you been coming to FCF? Almost four years now. Almost four years. Today's the day. What's your name, Mr. Oldest. O one more time. Oldest. That is the coolest name. And where are you from? I'm from here, but uh, 
It's a Latvian name. Latvia, from Latvia, yes. Yeah, so and what's your name? Paul. And where, how long have you come to FCF? Six years. Six years. Pastor, can we take over any second now? You're just going to let me keep going. Uh, so you're, totally so, yeah. let me keep going. You do it so I'm well. running out of words and mumbling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what's your name, dear? Sophia. Sophia, how long have you been coming to FCF? Six years. Six years, Six years. Pastor. Kim. What's your name? Paul. Paul, how long have you been at us? Twelve years. Well, and your name is? Kevin. Kevin. And uh, I saw you just the other week. It was so good to see you. How long at FCF? Uh, three months. Three months. All right. And you are? Adam. Um, how long, Adam? And I pretty much grew up here. Grew up here. Love it. Love it. What's your name? Brian. Brian. How long have you been here? Two and a half years. Two and a half. All right. Diane. Hey. Diane. And how long? Thirteen years. Thirteen. Just like Donald over there. All right. Uh, Lori. Lori. And how long, Lori? Long time. 25 years. 25 years, yes. And finally? Raphael. Raphael. How long, Raphael? Four months. Four months. Woo! Well, we did, we did have one other thing. Where is my man Donald? Donald, where are you? It's Donald's birthday. That lines up with his faith birthday. Isn't that awesome? What do you think? Should we baptize some people this morning? Let's do it. Come on. So you guys can go that way.
for the rest of my days, and I want everybody to know it. Isn't that great? What a great Sunday. Thank you for being here with us. Again, especially if it was your first time, before you leave today, we would love to meet you personally, shake your hand. So we invite you to just exit over at Guest Central. Pastor Randy will be there, Pastor Pete. They might be a little wet, but that's okay. So I'd love to meet you before you leave today. And if, if you need to pray with anyone, you need a little bit of prayer before you leave today, we want to invite you on this side of the auditorium, back in that corner where it says Prayer Central. Some wonderful folks would spend some time in prayer with you. Have a great rest of the day. Celebrate all day long.